Welcome to The Daily for Thursday, November 3rd with Greg Lawless. I'm Jason Seguini. We now know two of the conference finalists, the first one being Real Salt Lake. What a game it was last night at CenturyLink. This was an amazing 90 minutes of emotion, I think, for anyone. I was on the edge of my seat, and I really thought Seattle were going to get that third goal and tie it up, but it was not to be. All right, our own Jackie Pickering and Matt Doyle were at the match. Well, Real Salt Lake withstood relentless pressure the entire 90 minutes from the Sounders, and they lived to play another day as they advanced to the Western Conference Final. You know, Matt, they definitely needed every one of those three goals that they got in Rio Tinto. Yeah, they had a three-goal cushion, and they used all of it. It wasn't the best performance. I don't think they're that happy with it, but they survived, and they advanced. And as a veteran team, they know that's what they need to do. Well, looking at the Sounders, I mean, obviously they don't advance, but they get the win tonight, and Ziggy has to be pretty proud of how his team rebounded from Saturday. I, I think they'll be disappointed not to advance, but they do have to be happy with that second 45 minutes. They really showed up for the first time in the playoff game, and they got the win. And for Seattle, that's something to build on for 2012. Well, the Sounders do collect their first franchise win in the playoffs, but unfortunately it's just not enough to move them into the next round. Thanks, guys. The game last night proved to be Casey Keller's last game as a professional, Greg. At least he went out with a shutout. He went out with a shutout, but I think he's going to go out feeling disappointed that they weren't able to get through. At the same time, you look at his career and everything he's done for soccer, for American soccer around the world, all the teams he's played for, all the, the big clubs, the big leagues, and then everything he did when he came back to Seattle to embrace the Sounders and really give them that world-class feel on the field, uh, you know, he should go out feeling very proud. And you saw the outpour of support for Keller after the game. He was trending on Twitter as the game came to a close. So best of luck to him and his next endeavors. We're moving on. The other game last night, Kansas City over the Colorado Rapids, 2-0. They will move on. Yeah, a 4-0 aggregate victory over Colorado. I think this was pretty inevitable once it got started. But it was all about the rain, actually, at the beginning of this one. Yeah, crazy weather out there. And our own Nick Fershaw was at the match. From a very soggy and satisfied Livestrong Sporting Park, where Sporting Kansas City gets a big 2-0 win over the Colorado Rapids in the second leg of the Eastern Conference semifinals. That pushes Sporting Kansas City into the Eastern Conference final on Sunday. They await the winner of Philadelphia Union and the Houston Dynamo. This one turned on two goals for Sporting Kansas City, one from Aureli and Collin and one from CJ Sapong, both off dead balls. Graham Zussi gets the assists on both. The Colorado Rapids knew they had long odds coming into this one if they wanted to defend their MLS Cup down the line. They couldn't get any offense going. Uh, in the opening few minutes. Sporting Kansas City able to counter on that dead ball header past Matt Pickens. And for Sporting Kansas City, they beat the Colorado Rapids at their own game. A very physical, rough match. A lot of yellow cards. Sporting Kansas City throwing a lot of bodies on the ground. And the Colorado Rapids, quite honestly, didn't have a lot of bodies left. A lot of injuries coming into this game. Probably the biggest one uh, that they had suffered was Drew Moore on that back line. Both goals off set pieces. That's usually Drew Moore's territory for the Colorado Rapids. Either way, Sporting Kansas City moving on to their first Eastern Conference final as Sporting Kansas City and a very big game coming up at Livestrong Sporting Park on Sunday. Thanks Nick. We'll find out who Sporting's opponent will be in the conference championship tonight after Houston hosts the Philadelphia Union this game 8 30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Yeah and the Dynamo with a two to one aggregate lead right now after that victory up at PPL Park. They come home to Robertson Stadium. It's going to be a good crowd out there. They're going to all be wearing orange. This to me is Houston's game to lose because they have the lead. They're at home. They're playing very confidently and that back line including the center backs in particular. Andre Hainal playing the best soccer of his career and arguably Bobby Boswell doing the same thing. Tally Halls look very confident. I think that back line and that defense will hold strong against the Philadelphia Union. And this game is the beginning of a doubleheader on ESPN2 and I should mention TSN2 in Canada. The second part, the LA Galaxy hosting the New York Red Bulls. That will be 11 p.m. Eastern time. And this, of course, is the big one, the, the marquee matchup we've been talking about in this whole series. And the rhetoric on uh, Wednesday ratcheted up a little bit more again with Luke Rogers coming out and saying, you know what? Let's just play. Forget all this sort of whining about stuff and forget about who's cheap and who isn't. Let's just go out there and play and say, I came out here to play in the playoffs. This is what it's all about. And on the other side, the Galaxy saying, we are the best team. I feel confident. Mike McGee earlier this week coming out and saying mm -hmm. that he feels that this is not New York's time. This is the Galaxy's time. And they have a 1-0 lead in aggregate. They're at home where they have not lost this entire season. A big uphill battle for the Red Bulls.
If the Galaxy win, they will host the conference final on Sunday. If New York were to win, Real Salt Lake will host mm. the conference final on Monday. So we right. could get some Monday night football. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out, but I think this is a game for the Galaxy. All right, one more thing we want to mention, the uh, under-23 camp that's going to happen next week. Mm -hmm. Caleb Porter, the new coach of that team, calling in a bunch of players, including some MLS guys. Eight MLS players called in, and let's not forget there are other young, eligible players who are in the playoffs still that weren't called in. But the, the list does include Sean Johnson, the goalkeeper from Chicago, Perry Kitchen, defender from DC United. There's also actually an academy kid from LA Galaxy who was called in for this one as well. So they're going to have about a week in Germany training. Caleb Porter gets his first look at some of the guys, and uh, he starts to formulate his team ready for uh, qualifications actually next March. Okay, Extra Time Radio, want to remind everyone, is going to come out tomorrow with reaction from both games tonight and, of course, yesterday. That's all we have for the Daily Today. We'll be back tomorrow.